Are you going on a cruise and wondering about the cruise luggage guidelines? The things that might be surprising that you're actually allowed to bring on a cruise and the other things that you shouldn't. We're going to go through everything that you need to know in this video. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Well, going on a cruise is really so different than getting to an airport and flying, thank goodness, because that is actually much more complicated. But there are some things that you do need to know. So everything from cruise luggage guidelines and limits to really how things are gonna work in terms of your luggage actually getting onto the ship and being x-rayed and what they might be looking for, even to some cruise tips and hacks that I will share with you to make packing and putting away your luggage just a little bit easier. Now I should also mention, if you've cruised a few years ago, some of the things have actually changed. So do make sure that you do stay with me through this video to make sure that you're completely up to date. Now, before I get started, I did wanna mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give the video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. So I have about 12 main points and I'm gonna lump the tips and hacks towards the end. So the first thing is how much luggage can you bring and what size should it be? Now the cruise lines in general are a lot more relaxed than when you are getting on a flight. So don't overly stress about it. However, what most cruise lines do suggest is that you can bring up to two suitcases per person weighing up to 50 pounds each. Now, just something to mention, if you go on the Carnival Cruise Line website, they do give a little bit more specifics and I think it's actually a good rule of thumb. So for a three to five night cruise, they suggest that you bring one suitcase per person. And if you're going on a cruise that's six nights or more, they suggest that you bring no more than two pieces of luggage per person. Now I do really think even though I'm an overpacker, that that is enough luggage for I think all of us when we are on a cruise. Now, if you're flying to your cruise port, make sure that you do check on your airline website. Make sure that you absolutely comply to all of the luggage requirements that they have in terms of the weight and the size of that baggage as well. And another little tip, make sure that you do bring with you an electronic luggage scale. That is really good for at the end of your cruise when you are packing up to take your flight home, just to make sure that you didn't, well, bring too many souvenirs and maybe your luggage is a little bit overweight. And this way, what you can do is just make sure that you do distribute things maybe in your backpack or between a couple of suitcases. So that will be something convenient. Now, a lot of people ask if there are baggage fees when you go on a cruise or even how they work it out to check the weight of your suitcases. And being completely honest, at least at the time that I am filming this video, I have never seen or heard of any cruise line actually weighing the luggage. So I think it's kind of an honor system and just try not to make that luggage be too heavy. Now, cruise lines do suggest that you bring a carry-on bag for the first day of your cruise. And of course, that can be a backpack. That can be also like a good tote bag. I will show you the one that I really like to bring is this. This actually goes, it's just this nautical stripe bag that I like. I think it's super cute, but it actually goes right over your suitcase. So that is really handy if you're flying and you could bring that with you or another one that I've been using lately my husband um, brought this and this is just another one that actually has a separate compartment that you can keep your laptop and even like a packing cube with a change of clothes for the first day so all of that basically could be kept in your carry-on bag now what I will do is just to let you know at the end of this video I'm going to leave a video all about what you pack in your carry-on bag for embarkation day, including a couple of things that on our last cruise really did surprise me. I hadn't thought of them and I definitely will be packing them for future cruises. Now I have some great news about toiletries. One of the really good things about getting on a cruise versus flying is whether it's in your carry-on bag or your checked bags, you can actually bring full-size toiletries. So that is something to keep in mind. Now, I do have a little bit of a tip. If you don't want to fly with full-size toiletries, that does get really kind of complicated. If you are heading into the cruise port one day before, then just take a trip down to your Target or your Walmart, and you can actually pick up those toiletries and even like a few over-the-counter medications if you want. This way you can avoid having them on your flight and you can pick them up right in the cruise port right before your cruise. Okay, so now let's talk about the things that you can bring on your cruise that are maybe a little bit surprising some main things that might surprise you that you can't 
bring on your cruise and as well how the cruise lines will know if you do and what they will do if you bring them anyway. So firstly, the things that you can bring on a cruise that can be a little bit surprising is the majority of cruise lines will allow you if you want to bring a bottle of wine or even sometimes more per person onto your cruise. Now do check on your cruise line website because not all of them do, but many of the mainstream lines actually do. And in some cases, like on Carnival, they even allow you to bring a bottle of champagne. So if you wanna share a bottle of champagne, have a toast at Sail Away in your cabin, like on the balcony or something like that, you can absolutely do that and it won't cost you any money at all. Now just to note on most cruise lines, when you bring a bottle of wine, if you choose to drink it in the main dining room or in another public area, then they are going to charge you a corkage fee. Now something else that's really interesting about cruises, and it can actually save you some money on board as well, is a lot of the mainstream cruise lines will allow you to bring small amounts of cans of soda on board. So Carnival, Royal Caribbean, Princess, they'll allow you to bring some cans of soda. So maybe if you wanna bring 12 or so, um, you can absolutely do that. And that's handy if you don't have the beverage package and maybe you just wanna bring a few for personal use, you can definitely do that. But again, check the cruise line websites. Now, something that is a little bit different is water bottles. Now, just a few years ago, I used to pick up a case of about 24 water bottles and I would just uh, get up to the cruise terminal and I would give my entire case of water bottles to the porter. They would slap a luggage tag on it and it would be delivered to my cabin. But more and more cruise lines are actually not allowing water bottles anymore. And again, check the cruise line website to see. However, in that case, what they do have is oftentimes like a water bottle package and you can actually order water bottles to your cabin for a pretty reasonable price, which is actually much easier than lugging them around. Now, a couple other things that you can bring, and I know a lot of people are gonna be happy about this one, is that you can bring hair straighteners, you can bring curling irons. So basically those kind of things you can bring, but other than that, you really can't bring other types of appliances or anything else that can be a fire hazard. So you can't bring irons and you cannot bring clothes steamers either on a cruise. Those are actually potential fire hazards and they will likely be confiscated. Now, something else that you can't bring on a cruise, even if it's in your checked luggage, is a non-surge protected power strip. A lot of people bring power strips on cruises because for some reason there just are not a lot of electric outlets or even USB outlets on the majority of cruise ships. So what you can bring though is a non-surge protected one. So what I'll do is I will leave a link down in the description below this video for this as well as other cruise items that you might find that you do need and you want to pick up. I will leave them down in the description below this video but you can definitely bring this. Now also I've heard some people say that they bring like a converter. I think it's called a converter. Please let me know if you do bring this. I have this from a cruise that I did or a trip that I did years ago to Europe. I don't think I ever did end up using it um, on the cruise ship, but I definitely did use it in the hotel. And if you do bring this to use in the European plug, please let me know. Now, if you travel with a CPAP machine, you are gonna to wanna to let the cruise line know ahead of time. This way they can accommodate you with distilled water because they can have that delivered to your cabin. And as well, they may ask you to bring an extension cord or more likely they may have one that they can provide for you, but they do need to know. And as well, you'll wanna make sure that that CPAP machine is with you in your carry-on. Now, if this is your first cruise, something that might really surprise you is the way it works when you do actually bring your luggage to the cruise terminal. So you're not going to bring your luggage into the terminal the way you would at an airport. What's going to happen is you're going to arrive by taxi or by your own car or by shuttle and you're going to basically have porters that are there and those porters are going to take your luggage. They're gonna put your luggage on luggage racks. Don't worry, that's actually going to go straight on the cruise ship. Now you're not going to get a receipt or anything, but don't worry, they do this all the time and they're only having the luggage for that one specific ship in that one area. So don't worry, that luggage will actually get on the cruise ship. Now a little tip for you, is to make sure, first of all, that you have your luggage tags already on your suitcase. Now to make it easier, what I do suggest is that you buy and use these reusable plastic luggage tag holders. Put them on every one of your suitcases and only put it on like the morning of your cruise right before heading to the cruise terminal. Now, just something to mention is the different cruise lines have different luggage tag holders. So I am going to leave links to them down in the description below this video. And something else to note is a lot of times people do ask, 
do I have to tip the porters when I do give them my luggage? So obviously tipping is never mandatory. However, it is customary to tip the porters. Now the amount that you give is up to you, but what people do say is some people say between $1 a bag and $5 a bag. So I will leave that up to your discretion. If you do want to comment um, as to how much you've given in the past down in the comments, I know a lot of people really do appreciate having those guidelines. Now, while cruise lines are pretty relaxed when it comes to cruise luggage restrictions, what they are not relaxed about is actually safety and security. So yes, the luggage is actually x-rayed, it is checked, there are even some sniffer dogs. So when that luggage is going onto the cruise ship and as well, when you do bring your carry-on bag and you do go into the cruise terminal, that will go through an x-ray machine as well. And you will go through security in a similar way to the way you do go through security at an airport. Now I have a few tips and hacks and kind of tricks as to how to handle your luggage once you do get on the cruise ship and just make it a little bit easier in terms of packing. But before I do, I did want to mention that if you are interested in keeping organized, having cruise packing lists, I do have the Ultimate Cruise Planner. Now the Ultimate Cruise Planner is a 47 page downloadable printable cruise planner that can help you stay organized from the time that you book your cruise all the way through disembarkation. So while it has cruise packing list and cruise embarkation bag packing list, it also has planning forms to help you to plan your shore excursions, your cruise outfits and more. Now, if you are interested, I will leave the link down in the description below this video so that you can check it out to see what's included. So I have a few tips as to how you can organize your luggage and just kind of make things go a little bit easier. So just something to mention, it's gonna take a couple of hours until you get your luggage delivered to your cabin once you're on the cruise ship. So again, make sure that you do bring your carry-on bag so you have the things that you need really for the first day of your cruise, even including like a change of clothes and things to freshen up and maybe a bathing suit. But beyond that, something that is a little bit of a good tip is to do something to your luggage to make it kind of stand out. Now, while you don't need to do that for when you're getting onto the cruise ship, at the end of your cruise for disembarkation, well, what's gonna happen is if you do choose traditional disembarkation, what's gonna happen is your luggage is going to be put with thousands of other suitcases at the end of the cruise. And sometimes it can be a little bit hard to find, especially if you have a black or a navy blue or even a gray suitcase. So what you can do is actually make your luggage stand out and differentiate it by adding a ribbon to it, by adding sort of a luggage sleeve to it, even by using some duct tape on it, just something that makes it stand out a little bit. That's even going to be something really good even for when you're flying to find your luggage when it does come through the carousel. Now, I also highly suggest using packing cubes. Packing cubes are gonna make it so much easier, not only to pack, but especially to unpack. So when you get to your cabin, what you can actually do is leave some of your items in the packing cubes. So for instance, if you have t-shirts folded or shorts folded, you can actually keep them in your packing cube and place it right onto the shelf or in the drawer. And it could just make it so much easier. It'll cut down on some of the unpacking time. Now I have a few other packing tips and tricks, but I don't wanna put everything into this video because it would make it too long. But please let me know down in the comments below if you would like to see that video coming up soon. When it comes to your suitcases, you wanna make sure that you put these out of the way because cruise cabins are small. So most of the time your luggage should be able to fit straight under your bed. I'm gonna leave a picture of my own luggage. It's actually a pretty good size. And what we often do is we put one suitcase into the other, we place that under the bed, it fits just fine. But by chance, if you have a very large closet, what you could also do, especially if you don't wanna put it under your bed, is you can actually just place your luggage towards the back of the closet and that will work as well. Now, something else that's really important, and I think I really probably should have mentioned this early in the video, so if you're watching it till now, good for you because you got this tip, and it is that you should not lock your luggage. So cruise lines do actually ask people not to lock their luggage because what could happen is once it goes through the x-ray, they actually do check through some of the bags. Now, some of the things they're actually checking for are those confiscated items or those items that they may confiscate. So basically those irons, those steamers, and they're also going to be looking for, sometimes people are sneaking alcohol in. So they're definitely kind of looking for that as well. So don't lock your luggage. 
Now, if you are wondering what happens to those items, do you kind of get in trouble if you bring any of those things on board? So don't bring anything that's a fire hazard, really just please don't. Uh, but when it comes to some of the other stuff that's not necessarily illegal, but sometimes people do try to kind of bring it in, what will usually happen is they'll actually remove it and oftentimes they do give it back to you at the end, but you may find that you don't get your suitcase um, delivered to your cabin, that you have to call down to guest services and they may suggest that you go down to one of the rooms to find your suitcase and some people call that the naughty room and basically that's where they'll show you what they found in your suitcase so completely up to you but just a little warning now i'm going to leave the information all about the ultimate cruise planner that is a downloadable printable cruise planner that you can print off as many pages as you want for as many cruises as you do go on so i will leave the information down in the description below this video in case you do want to check it out now i'm also going to leave a video right after this one all about what to pack for your cruise carry-on bag that I know will be helpful for you if you are going on a cruise. Now, if you did enjoy this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.